Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Engineering Dynamics. This is the second part in the series of rotor dynamics where we will talk about the eigenfrequencies and eigenvectors of a rotor with symmetric bearing stiffness. So we have kx and ky, so this is our stiffness. We have omega as our rotation speed and this is our rotor. And now we would like to know, well, what are the eigenfrequencies and what are the eigenvectors of that system? And how do they change with rotation speed? So in the last video, we talked about the gyroscopic moments. We got the equations of motion from the Newton and Euler part. Then we do, did a little projection with our matrix L and got our two by two system with our mass matrix, our gyroscopic matrix and our stiffness matrix. And now we wanna talk about the eigenvalue because or the eigenvalue problem because we have this system and we know that if we have a system that is moving or vibrating, we can get eigenfrequencies and eigenvectors. So let's talk about it. We propose a solution Q that is Z times exponential lambda T. And in this case, lambda and Z can be complex because we can have a phase shift. So this is the very, very general solution. So we can use this proposed solution and get q dot is equal to lambda z e lambda t and q double dot is equal to lambda squared z e lambda t lambda let me make this a t and we insert those q's into this equation and now we would like to know well what is the eigenvalue so what is the lambda so we will have this system and we are not interested in the trivial solution. So we are not interested in that Z is zero because a solution to that is equal to zero because we're now looking just at a at the free movement. So at the, where we have no force, so we remove that. So we're just looking, well, how can the system move on its own? So without excitation. So we have equal to zero and we're not interested in the trivial solution. So this needs to be multiplied with that is zero. So to have that, we again use the determinant. So the determinant of lambda squared m minus lambda g plus k is equal to zero because this matrix should not have a inverse. So we talked about this in the last videos. And if we now solve or try to get the determinant that is equal to zero of that system, we will get two eigenvalues. So first we have lambda one, that is imaginary, uh, an imaginary number times omega one. And lambda two is again imaginary omega two. And this omega is dependent on the rotation speed of our motor. And that dependency is in the G matrix. So the matrix G is actually dependent on the omega, uh, on the rotation. And dependent on the rotation speed, we will get two different eigenfrequencies of that system. So because this is a possibly changing system, we will always get different eigenvalues uh, depending on the rotation speed of our rotor. But the interesting part is that the eigenvectors they stay always the same because we have an imaginary part here. Our eigenvectors are i1 and minus i1. So we will have two distinct eigenvectors or be better to say two constant eigenvectors with a changing possible rotation speed. But because we're not, if we talk about the physical solution of that system, we can't use imaginary numbers. So we have to multiply our lambdas with our e lambda t and we will get the actual the physical vector so we will get a minus sign and a cosine and a sine and a cosine for the first this is our first eigenvector and this is our second eigenvector so it's basically like a mode shape and the another important part is that the solution when we talk about the determinant is equal to 0 the real part is always zero. And we know that if the real part is zero, we only have, and we only have the imaginary part, we will only have a oscillation. So our system is always stable. 
Now we can plot our eigenvalues, so our eigen uh, yeah, our eigenfrequencies dependent on our rotation speed. And this is called a Campbell diagram. So we will have two rotations. If we have no rotation at all, g is dependent, uh, not dependent on omega, and it's actually completely gone because our matrix G is zero if our rotation speed is zero. And then we will get two eigenfrequencies. And this is just basically a analog to a spring or two spring mass system where each spring has the same uh, eigenfrequencies because here we're talking with our stiffnesses that are equal. So we have equal stiffnesses in X and Y, and this is how we get to the Campbell diagram. So if we have an increasing rotation speed of our rotor, we will get two distinct eigenfrequencies. And of course, the corresponding eigenvectors. And the larger one is called the forward whirl, and the lower eigenfrequency is called the backwards whirl. So how can you imagine that system or that solution? If you have a forward whirl, so at time zero, if we just slightly push our rotor up and it has a certain speed that will, it will push it to the side. So if we, let's say we're at time zero, this is easier to understand. If we're at zero, X is zero and Y is or cosine is one. And at a further time step, cosine decreases and sine increases, but it has a minus, so it technically decreases into the x direction and we are here. So we rotate in this direction. For the backwards world, we have the same direction, but opposite to the rotation speed. Uh, to the rotation direction. So this is why it's called the forward and backwards world. So at a certain rotation speed, there is, or there are two frequencies. One is the for forward world and one is the backwards world. And the forward, forward world is always faster. And if you have a rotor that is spinning, for example, you put on a plate uh, attached to a drill and you just hold it, you will have you will not feel any rotation, but if you just give it a slight perturbation, you will see that you have a forward whirl that is very, very easy and very, very fast. And on the other side, if you try to turn it back a little bit, it will fall into the backwards whirl and you have a slow backwards whirling motion of your rotor. I hope, uh, I hope this video gave you a small under, or better understanding about the Campbell diagram and how we get it. I summarize again. Let me get rid of all these notations. So we had our equation of motion and we proposed a solution. We inserted that solution into our equations. We said that if we, we're not looking at the trivial solution where x is equal to zero and we have no vibration at all, we need to have this matrix uh, as singular so we don't have an inverse. So the determinant is zero. So we set the determinant of this matrix equal to zero and we get dependent on the rotation speed of our rotor, two different eigenfrequencies that has have the same eigenvector. Well, it's not technically the same. It's always dependent on the omegas, but the structure is the same. Then also try to remember that our system is stable and we can plot those two into a Campbell diagram. The backwards world will slowly uh, approach zero, but will never actually reach zero. So this is another side point. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you next time.